Okay, and we are live. Que tal, amigos? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with a Spain news update. We'll have a look at some of the stories that have caught my attention over the last couple of days or so. We'll have a look at some comments that have been left on videos recently to the usual format. So we'll get straight into it, back from holidays, back with live streams. The live streams have been off the YouTube platform for the last three weeks or so because of technical issues. I didn't have the equipment with me down there in Australia to do live streams. That's the reason, as most of you guys no doubt know. But they'll be, but they're back now. We'll be doing live streams twice a week, maybe three times a week. Not sure yet. Have to work out what the format's going to be for 2024. But anyway, we'll talk about that later. Straight into the news and the uh, organized crime gangs uh, here in Spain are at it again or in other parts of Europe also. And as we can see here, organized crime is turning Spain into Europe's rubbish dump. Rubbish is a million dollar business. The collection, transport and disposal of waste are regulated by European directives that have been incorporated in, into Spanish law since 2000. The complex regulations mean that obtaining public waste management contracts requires a large business and logistical structure, which in turn implies a large investment. According to Guardia Civil investigators, getting, re getting rid of the remains of economic and domestic activity, especially the most polluting or harmful waste, asbestos, construction materials, household appliances, etc., has been fertile ground for rogue traders. The Guardia Civil's Environmental Protection Service, Seprona, with its latest operations, has uncovered that organized crime is specializing in illegal waste trafficking and turning Spain into Europe's rubbish dump. And I think there have been two uh, rubbish tips or rubbish dumps in Spain where they have found this material coming from other European countries where obviously it is expensive to dispose of that waste. Uh, the mafia stepping in or these, uh, these organized crime gangs, I think out of Italy, but don't quote me on that, stepping in and saying, we'll take care of the problem for you. Uh, just pay us what you need to pay us. And of course, they find places to dump it. I think that is the story. But the Guardia Civil, one of Spain's police forces on the case and finding these illegal dumping sites around the country and trying to put an end to this organized, uh, organized crime uh, gang racket. Next piece of news here, and uh, a lot of people have been asking this question, why is the Spanish Super Football Cup being played in Saudi Arabia and how long will it be held there? The Spanish Super Cup has now been held in Saudi Arabia for three consecutive years. The first edition took place in 2020, but the COVID pandemic meant that the 2021 edition will be held at La Catuja Stadium in Sevilla. The Federation in the in the time of Luis Rubiales set out to set out to turn around a tournament that was in the way for some clubs and incidentally to take the Spanish football brand to the rest of the world therefore after an auction with several possible venues it was it was decided to go for the Arab country or go to the Arab country Saudi Arabia and we can see at the moment that the competition on, there were some games uh, late last week between the three biggest clubs in Spain, Barcelona, Real Madrid and Atletico de Madrid. And uh, also another team from the north of Spain from the Pamplona area, I think, called Osasuna. And they, of course, played those games. Real Madrid coming out on top over Atletico and Barcelona coming out on top over uh, Osasuna, I believe, and I think the final must be uh, today. I'm not sure, but uh, I imagine that it will be held today and held in Saudi Arabia. And as we saw there, the reasons, mainly money. Mr. Rubiales, the controversial ex-director of uh, football here in Spain, of course, losing his job after that uh, non-consensual kiss Back in August, I think it was, down in Australia, where he kissed a player uh, that uh, didn't really want to be kissed. And that led to a, a pretty uh, serious uh, case for him to answer. And, of course, the Saudi Arabia deal going back to his time in charge. Next piece of news. And uh, Spain's tourism industry, if it is sustainable or not. But according to one hotel uh, owner here in Spain, or uh, uh, owner of many hotels, Simon Pedro Barcelo, Spain can exceed 100 million foreign tourists without any sustainability problems. When asked the question, sustainability is nowadays a hackneyed, ubiquitous concept. 
Is it possible to be sustainable when we receive more than 80 million tourists a year in Spain? And Mr. Barcelo's answer was, Spain has the capacity to exceed 100 million foreign tourists without any sustainability problems. I really like Hotelier Carmen Rio's concept of, res of responsible sustainability. We don't have to go crazy. Our urgency is to do things a little better, a little bit better every day. All companies need to address the fundamental sustainability issues. We have just become founders of a sustainability institute created by Business School, IESE, which brings together business expertise and academic knowledge. Sustainability has to become normal. It is not impossible, says Mr. Barcelo, of course, head of the Barcelo or Barcelo in Spanish hotel chain coming out of the Balearic Islands. And of course, all around the world nowadays, it is a uh, uh, an international hotel chain, the Barcelo, uh, Barcelo Group. And uh, no problems when it comes to sustainability. Some questions have been thrown around recently about whether Spain's tourism industry is sustainable given the drought issues in many parts of the country, namely Andalusia and Catalonia. Is it sustainable, this mass tourism model? Uh, according to him, it is. But I suppose that would be like asking Philip Morris if uh, smoking is good or bad for someone's health. We know what the answer would have been uh, when, uh, from Mr. Philip Morris if uh, that person ever existed. Now we'll go into the chat section now, or sorry, the comment section first. Have a look at some comments that have been left on videos in recent times. And then we'll go into the chat section. So if you are, so if you are watching the live stream this evening, say hello in the chat section. Say welcome back in the chat section if you like. Uh, if you think that uh, <laughs> I am welcome back to these live streams. First uh, comment here from Steve. Uh, hi, Stu. Glad to see you got back from Perth, okay? I read El País every day. Oh, I read, sorry, El País on my day, uh, every day on my Kindle. But when I told my physio in Murcia uh, this, he told me this is the voice of the government. Don't read it. Yeah, this is a debate which popped up the other day and really nothing uh, new here. El País, according to some, the mouthpiece of the government. And you only have to have a look at the uh, uh, main front page of that newspaper today, the interview with uh, Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez, saying that uh, what he's doing at the moment is uh, all going according to plan. No problems, no problema, no hay problema aquí, según Señor Sánchez. But uh, other people would uh, think that Spain is a little bit off the rails at the moment and uh, we shouldn't be listening to Mr. Sanchez. Don't know. But of course, the El Pais newspaper supporting the government. There is another uh, news source which is run by the government called the uh, RTVE, the Radio, uh, Radio Televisión Española. That is also said to be a government mouthpiece. So there are various government mouthpieces. And of course, there are opposition mouthpieces also uh, on the right side of the political spectrum. El Mundo, La Razón, ABC, to name three. And there are others in on uh, online in a digital format. But uh, traditional formats, those are the main three. And on the left, of course, Publico is a left-wing newspaper. El País and uh, Diario. Yeah, .es, which is an online newspaper, also could be called a government mouthpiece. But thanks for that. Next one here from uh, Erica. I, I had one of the sons in an English class of Mr. Griffold's just at the time they were, they were wanting to broaden their international market. I did warn him that he needed to be aware of U.S. business practices. As he had studied at top uh, private universities, uh, he told me they were 100% sure that they knew, they, knew, they knew what they were doing. He was very cocky. One can never be too sure of knowing everything. Yeah, this is the scandal, if you like, the uh, stock market scandal of this company, Grifols, a Catalonian company, Catalan company, that specializes in healthcare products, I believe, uh, pharmaceutical industry, and uh, in trouble at the moment because uh, an American hedge fund called uh, Gotham Capital, uh, named after Gotham City, I believe, uh, questioning the accounting practices of this company, causing the company to crash by up to 40% in the stock market. I think they recovered at the end of last week and uh, finished the week with losses of around 32%. But in any case, billions wiped off the stock price of that company. And of course, now we go into uh, legal disputes between Gotham Capital and the company Griffoles. 
But uh, we don't like to see this, and it's not the first time that uh, Gotham Capital has criticised the Spanish company. In fact, we have to go way back, I think around 10, maybe 12 years ago, a company called GoEx, which was receiving uh, uh, prizes and awards and money from government from the government back then because it was one of these innovative companies here in Spain. But of course, they didn't have a business model. They uh, cooked the books. Gotham uh, made it public, and of course, that company went down like a lead balloon, and uh, people, if they didn't go to jail, should have gone to jail, but uh, are suffering at the hands of Spanish justice at the moment. I uh, was, don't know whether fortunate or unfortunate to meet the uh, account, main accountant of that company back in the day, and from what I've heard recently, he's still suffering because he is his case hasn't gone to trial yet. Every time it comes up for trial, somebody puts in another complaint and it sets it back, and he's been in this process for, I think, around, don't quote me on this, but at least eight, maybe nine years. Not sure exactly when this, Gotham, or when this um, GoEx case exploded, but this uh, man, Paco is his name, uh, in trouble with the justice still. And uh, I don't think he has a passport, hasn't had a passport, hasn't had access to his accounts, I don't think. So life has not been easy for that accountant of that company. So got to be careful. Another one here from Michael. Will Sanchez go to any lengths for political power, even if it means independence with or without conditions for Catalonia? He may have, he may have let the fox into the chicken coop. I could be wrong. Yeah, Michael, I don't think anybody knows what's going on at the moment, depending on who you talk to. If you if you talk to people on the right side of politics, it's a disaster. If you talk to people on the left, it's all going according to plan. Mr. Sanchez is uh, operating uh, in the correct way and doing what he needs to do, and uh, he uh, has uh, a plan which he's trying to carry out. And uh, people on the left uh, and supporters of Mr. Sanchez thinks that he will be successful considering how successful he, he has been at a personal level, at least, and for his party in politics here in Spain. Remember, five or six years ago, Mr. Sanchez wasn't even the leader of the Socialist Party. He got kicked out, but he worked his way back, and he worked his way back to the top, and he worked his way to the top of the country and was able to convince enough people last time or do enough deals last time in the 23rd of July elections uh, to secure government again. So uh, people, are, some people, as I said, confident Mr. Sanchez is doing the correct thing. Other people think he's destroying the country. Nobody knows. Time will tell. Time will tell. Another one here from Eurobaz. The Catalonia immigration issue will not only have a ripple effect amongst the other 16 autonomous communities, but might ring alarm bells in Brussels. Well, Mr. Sanchez today, Eurobaz, came out and said that one of the main uh, things with immigration here, being able to kick people out of the country if they commit crimes. And I think that's what Junts wants to be able to do, or at least the Catalonian government be able to do, because they don't control the government in Catalonia. Junts, it's controlled by their arch enemy, the ERC. Junts is on the right side of politics, uh, more extreme right side of politics every day. And uh, on the extreme left of politics, you have the ruling party in Catalonia, the ERC. And these two parties don't see eye to eye. But what uh, Junts is saying that it's doing is con uh, receiving more and more for the Catalonian process and the more and more powers. But Mr. Sanchez, as I said today, was adamant that uh, immigration uh, might go to Catalonia, but being able to kick people out, kick people out of the country will be a responsibility of the central government and not Catalonia. So again, not sure what's going on because contradicting stories coming out. But anyway, that's Spain. Another one here from Andrew. The Spanish lady refused UK entry the other day, had neglected to update or renew various documents as required, hence entry denial. Well, obviously, Andrew, something went on. She obviously didn't have some type of paperwork in order because if you arrive at uh, customs or border control in any country and your documents are in order, normally they let you through. But obviously she had something missing or she went through the process. I think I read today in an article that she went through the process in maybe even as late as last year, 2023, and she's uh, she uh, did her residency on the back of some agreement that was reached, but maybe 
customs officials there were not sure of that. But all I know is that she, uh, I don't think she's back in the UK yet, even though she has her life there. Uh, So we'll see what happens with this case. But normally, if you have everything in order, you have the correct documentation, you have the residence card if necessary. In the UK, I don't think there would be a residence card, so you'd have to have some type of uh, paperwork. So uh, something missing, no doubt, and that was the reason. So thanks for the comment. And the final one here from Paul. Paul Gerard, hi, Stu. Politically, Spain is in a right mess. By the way, Stu, do you get the jet lag worse going or coming back? Yeah, good question, uh, Paul Gerard. I'll answer the uh, uh, question here first. Uh, Jet lag uh, at both ends, basically. It's a very, very long trip. The trip there was around, all up around 25 hours with uh, flying time and uh, time in airports and waiting for planes and things like that. So by the time you get to Australia, you are jet lagged. There's no doubt about that. But I get straight into it when I get there because you're going to uh, a new place. Well, even though it's not new for me, I'm going you know, to a place that I like to be. I get straight into the rhythm. I try to get into my uh, family's rhythm, which is an early morning rhythm because the sun seems to come up in Australia, or at least in Western Australia, around 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning. You go down to the beach at 6 o'clock and you've never seen so many people doing exercise as you uh, will down there. Here it's uh, quite different. The sun doesn't come up now until 8.30 in the morning. You don't see anybody around until 10.30, 11, especially at weekends. During the week, it's a little bit different when people are working. But getting back to the question there, on the way back, also jet lag because we had a long trip back, something like 38 hours, I think, with a 14-hour layover or stopover in Istanbul. So uh, we went out into uh, the city, uh, went to a hotel, tried to rest, but of course it's not easy when you've been stuck in economy class for 11 or 12 hours, which was the case. So to answer the question there, Paul, uh, on both sides, there is a jet lag effect. Uh, It does take a few days to get over it, but because you're going to a new place, Australia, straight into the rhythm, doesn't seem to affect you too much. But when you come back here, uh, it's uh, freezing cold winter, yeah, I tend to notice it, notice it a bit more. And the other thing you mentioned here, politically, Spain is in a right mess. Yes, some people would say that is the case. Now, I'm going to go into the chat section. Before I do that, I'll just get through a few things. I'll put the email address up on the screen for anybody that wants to get in contact with me, uh, whether it's something to bring to my attention, a photo, like the one that we're going to see in a minute when I change the backdrop that was sent through the other day by Jeff. Great photo. Uh, Photos, send them through for the live streams that I can put up here on the green screen. Uh, News, anything you want to send through, that is the email address. Or even to ask me questions like uh, Hill did uh, yesterday when she asked me a question. Why don't I go to the part of Spain that uh, she's in? And the reason is that I haven't got there yet, but I will. For people that have supported the channel in recent times, thank you very much. Whether it's a super thanks, buying me a coffee, always appreciate it, especially given the prices of coffee in Australia. Five fifty a cup, five fifty Australian dollars, which is about three euros twenty. So we've got a fair way to go here until we hit those prices, unless it's specialist cafe and longer term supporters on Patreon. Thanks for that support. Now, backdrop change time. This is the uh, backdrop here. Let me see if I can find it. This is the picture that we're looking at today from Jeff, and it is the rock in Calpe. Calpe down there in Alicante, I believe. A nice picture. I think Jeff must have spent the winter break, the Christmas break, or the New Year's break down there. Not many people walking. In summer, that would be absolutely packed. But not many people walking today. Great photo, Jeff. Thanks for that. And plenty of photos sent through by Jeff. So we'll see some more, no doubt, in uh, coming videos. Now, I'll just change the backdrop. Bear with me. This was the uh, one here. Let me see if I can find it. Jeff. There we go. So the backdrop is changed now behind me. But you you had a good uh, look at what was going on in the picture. Now, we're, we're up to 156 uh, viewers, 50 likes. So I'll put the like icon on the screen as I normally do. If you haven't hit like, if you haven't hit it, sorry, hit that like button. Just below, you will find it, whether you're watching today on YouTube or Facebook, whichever of the two platforms you're watching on, you will find the like button there. Now, into the chat, I'm going to go. 
19 minute mark, which is uh, more or less normal. We've got a super chat here for first up from uh, Pete and uh, his wife. Um, let me have a look at the uh, what it says here. Reimbursement for your Foster's oil can purchases while in Australia. Yep. Pete uh, and Jane, sorry, uh, Pete's wife. We don't drink much uh, Foster's anymore in Australia. In fact, I don't think you would find a shop in Australia that sells Foster's. That's the state of uh, Foster's nowadays. For some reason, it became famous internationally, but it was never really a beer that uh, locals drank. And now there's so much uh, choice when it comes to beer in Australia. I've never seen anything like it. You can spend... You can spend 30 minutes in a uh, in a, a bottle shop, as we call them in Australia, or an off-license, as they call them in the UK. You can spend at least 30 minutes trying to choose your beer. There is uh, that much choice nowadays. A lot of craft beers, a lot of specialist beers, but uh, Foster's nowhere to be seen. You can get Victoria Bitter, VB. You can get Crownies, which came out of the same uh, brewery back in the day, the... Um, uh, well, Cult United Brewery, I think Foster's was, but it's an international brand nowadays, and you'll see more Foster's in places in England than you will in Australia, I think, or at least that was the case last time I was in England. Maybe it's changed also. Barbara, the first person, the second person that I can see, Olus Jew. We currently have a warm spell of weather at the Play Flamenca, 22. I saw that it was a very warm uh, winter. So far, or it has been a very warm, warm winter, Barbara, down there in Alicante and uh, other parts of the Valencian community. Somebody told me they spent New Year's Eve uh, in Valencia or Christmas in uh, New Year's Eve, and the weather was, what you say there, around 22. Beautiful weather for this time of the year. But, of course, not helping the uh, water issues, right? Pat coming in from a rainy Galicia. No, no problems with the water there, Pat, right? Only uh, plastic pellets, which is another issue for Galicia. Galicia seems to have been, well, it has been, I'm not going to say seems to have been, has been unlucky over the years as far as invent, uh, environmental issues are concerned. If we go back 20 years to the uh, oil tanker prestige that uh, spilled its uh, load and uh, all washed up on Galician beaches, took years to clean. And now with these little plastic pellets that came from a ship traveling off the coast of Portugal. I uh, can't remember the exact amount that have washed into the uh, sea. And uh, funnily enough, we'll see this tomorrow when I do another uh, normal news broadcast. The uh, Minister of the Environment in Galicia says that there's nothing wrong with a bit of plastic. If it gets into your fish or it gets into your seafood, a little bit of plastic won't hurt you. That's what Those were his words apparently, but I'll look into that before tomorrow. Stan coming in from Poland. Cold there. I imagine it uh, would be cold. Mugga is in the chat from uh, El Campello. Welcome back. Thanks, Mugga. Good to see you as well. Gino coming in from Canada. Hoping all is well. Thanks, Gino. Uh, various things. Gre uh, greetings from San Francisco. Planning on moving to Spain at the end of summer. Likely Valencia. Any websites you'd suggest to make it that transition smoothly would be great. Um, Plenty of information on the internet nowadays, various things. Plenty of people putting out content from Valencia. This uh, picture that I have in the background is the Valencian community. It might not be Valencia City, but it is uh, a Mediterranean destination. Uh, like I said, plenty of people vlogging out of Valencia. Plenty of info, plenty of uh, cost comparison sites nowadays. So you can check out what you will be paying for things in Valencia. People that... Um, I've known people over the journey that have loved Valencia City. I've known people that uh, haven't liked it so much. A friend of mine uh, some years ago moved to Madrid from Valencia, hated Valencia, couldn't get a decent job, a decent salary. So it uh, depends what you're going to be doing. But for quality of life, I think it's a, a city that's right up there, or at least it does very well every year in these um, city uh, surveys, the best cities in the world, Spain's uh, Valencia, Malaga, Alicante, normally are uh, in the top five. So I reckon it has plenty to offer. Alan coming in from a cold southeast London. Good to see you back in Spain. Hope you are well, not too cold. Well, it is cold, uh, not as cold today, fortunately, but it's been a cold return. And it's when you come from 36 degrees Celsius, which we had the majority of the time that I was in uh, Perth, uh, 30 plus every day 
yeah, difficult to come back, difficult to come back. And swimming in that warm Indian Ocean as well. Oh, lovely, lovely. Erica, hi, it's Jew. You must be suffering from getting back from Oz summer. Exactly. Terrassa today, a bit warmer, 13, but nights are still cold. Bit of rain, but not enough, fortunately. thing that I liked about uh, Perth this uh, recent trip were the nights uh, were uh, cooler. Able to sleep, which is important. Hot day, no, no problems. Cool nights, fantastic. Able to sleep. Peters, we saw the super chat from before. Hola, this frutone is 17 degrees in Michigan, but bright and sunny. Important, important. I think that would be 17 degrees Fahrenheit, I imagine. Not sure in Michigan. Alan, football is, or Alan, football is the game that could cure insomnia globally. It's such a shame the Spanish and Portuguese like the sport so much. Not only the Spanish and Portuguese, uh, I would say the majority of the world's countries seem to enjoy the sport. A little bit boring for some, considering that not many goals are score scored, but uh, it doesn't seem to be a, a hindrance for many. Sustainability, says Pat, asking the question. Overflowing sewers, garbage, lack of water. Well, as I said, we saw the tourism... Well, he's not a chief, he's a hotel owner, hotelier, if you like, and with a huge uh, hotel chain complex, saying that no problem, 100 million plus. Welcome to Spain, 100 million plus. We can push the limits, no problems, according to him. But again, do we trust that person don't know frank coming in from a cold crawley uk it's cold when i left cold when i come back jacques coming in from south africa welcome back hope you enjoyed your short trip i'm sure you found it to be too short yeah it did go quickly i will say jacques it did go quickly before i knew it i was back on that uh, plane stuck in the economy uh, trying to eat my food like this uh but it wasn't a bad flight. It wasn't a bad flight. This is not sponsored, but uh, Turkish Airlines were were quite good, I found. Quite good. Jimmy, Happy New Year. Thanks, Jimmy. Uh, John, coming in. Hi, fly Hello. Greetings from uh, a cold southeast London. All the best. Good to see you, John. Stephen, coming in from a chilly north London. Lee saying, water, water, water. Yes, that's the issue, isn't it? Water. Uh, Hans is saying, uh, Rainy Galicia, what's special about that? Five time, a wave of St. Jamer. It's always f finishing rainy but beautiful Galicia. Yeah, Hansi, nothing uh, unusual about rain in Galicia, but uh, it was just a comment. Flutter Girl, welcome back. Seven minus seven or seven below zero in Toronto, feeling like 14 below zero. Eric is saying that the uh, IS, IESC Business School, very much linked to the Opus Day. I am not surprised that whatever uh, that they say that whatever the number of tourists is sustainable. Uh, I link this to Torre Molinos, which was a Frankist Opus technocrats. Yes, there is a, a big uh, presence of that. Um, um, what is it? A some type of movement with inside the Catholic religion, the Opus Day. Of course, uh, brought to light by that movie back in the day. What was it? Uh, or a book, I think, was the original uh, publication. Uh, very strong here. And uh, you will come across a lot of people linked to that organization, very well positioned in business in Spain. I'll leave it at that. What else? She be chuckle. Your trip certainly, uh, your trip home certainly broaden your home accent. It tends to do that, uh, Shebe, when you go back and you start talking to uh, people that you haven't spoken to for a while here in Spain. I don't speak to many Australians. I speak to uh, English people, Irish people, Americans, uh, not many Aussies. And that's one of the reasons why my accent sort of becomes more neutral, I think, as the time goes by. But, uh, yeah, good to be back and uh, listening to that um, accent that uh, was the only one I heard for a long time. Andrew, good evening, Stuart and all. Happy New Year. I hope you're well and having a great start to 2024 from a very cold London. Mm, cold, isn't it? Exactly. Cold. Flutter Girl saying uh, jet lag is no joke. 
I feel it's worse when I travel from Europe back to Toronto. At lunchtime, I'm ready for bed. Yeah, it was uh, my case as well. Tired in the afternoons especially. Victor coming in. Saludos from Santander, Spain. Good to see you, Victor. From Santander. Santander. Hansi's saying, true. I used to live in Mosman Park, five minutes from Cottesloe Beach. Very busy in the morning. Cottesloe, I saw, was busy all day, Hansi. Uh, I think it's because it's one of those uh, beaches that has a, an easy access from the city. People coming there all the time by train. Scarborough's like that as well. Uh, not so much when you go to the other beaches, Triggs and places like that. But when you go to Scarborough, uh, Cottesloe, these beaches that are accessible uh, from the city, you do get a lot of people at all times of the day. And especially in the morning when people are out and about doing their exercise, drinking their lattes. Coffee culture is unbelievable, especially takeaway coffee. I've never seen so many people with takeaway coffee cups in their hands. Uh, Pete saying that uh, usually worst uh, for Pete on long trips to Asia, but uh, got to say your trip makes it academic, painful either way. Yeah, it's a long trip, Pete. That's it, especially long. Philip, nice to see me back in Madrid. Thanks, Philip, for that. No Fosters in Australia. I knew an Aussie athlete sponsored by Fosters in the 80s. Uh, adding my, yeah, um, I'm not saying that it wasn't a drink that was popular in the 1980s, but in Australia, never drank it as a kid. And when I, In the 1980s, that was when I was first hitting the beers. And we never drank Fosters. We drank local brands. Fosters was, was a Victorian beer originally. But uh, that's a story for another day. Uh, Jimmy, sports correspondent, Australia 2-zip, uh, India, Japan, 4-2 Vietnam, or 2-zip over India in the uh, soccer. Rocky, Ollis Jew, Gino and Diana from Vancouver, BC. Arctic spell over soon. We had 20 degrees below. Can't wait to come to Spain. I'm sure a lot of people wanting to get to a, a warmer destination. I myself am already looking at flights to, uh, south to the Canaries, uh, but I uh, don't know whether it's going to be possible. But I'm looking, I'm looking. Rosa coming in on Facebook, Happy New Year's. Just got back from uh, Mijas, a couple of days, weather was overcast. And it did rain on Thursday, but not enough. When Girola has water cut for seven hours during the night due to the crisis. Yes, yeah, somebody sent me an article about this, uh, Rosa. The problem in uh, Fuengirola and other uh, towns there on the Costa del Sol getting their water supply cut at night. And uh, apparently I read today, or I saw a headline saying that if the situation doesn't improve within uh, seven to eight weeks, uh, even more restrictions in uh, these towns. But no problem for Barcelo, uh, the tourism uh, uh, boss. More the merrier. Come on. What are we waiting for? 80 million is not enough. We need and over 100 what else we got going on here? Colin, not commented for a while, so just saying hello. Hello, uh, Colin, for that. Darren, coming in from Torre Vieja, uh, 23 there, spoke to his dad. Greetings from New Eltham, uh, southeast London. Diffie, yeah, I love the Perth beaches, but uh, you can keep the white pointers. Didn't see a shark, uh, Diffie. There were a few shark alarms, as there normally are. Somebody uh, died, I think, in South Australia when I was there. I think there was an attack in Esperance. But don't quote me on that. I know somebody definitely died in South Australia. A young surfer got his leg bitten off by a shark and subsequently died of whatever. Probably uh, bled to death. Not sure. But uh, tragedy nonetheless. And uh, Perth beaches are fairly well patrolled, I must say. Fairly well patrolled. Uh, but uh, there's worse things at the beach than the sharks in Perth. You've got to be careful with rips, currents. Mm. Now, neither of the two, Rocky. Neither of the two. I'm not a fan of uh, football. And if I do lean towards a team here in Spain, it's uh, Atletico de Madrid. Because uh, the people in the other rooms here are mad about that team. Uh, at least I wasn't on uh, something star. Is that jet star or something? Is it flying back? No, I, I did go low cost on the way back on one of the uh, routes, but uh, it wasn't jet star. 
7 to 20 degrees in uh, Peniscola, according to uh, Mary. Loves the lives. You know, the lives are going to be back. Mike coming in uh, with Mimi, coming in from Portland, Oregon. Uh, six below there. Celsius, that is. Glad he made it back. Hope the sun was re very refreshing. Yes, it was indeed. I love the uh, coastal lifestyle in summer, at least, in, in uh, Perth, Western Australia. But anyway. Uh, one, two, three, Sean away. Uh, County Waterford, Ireland. Welcome back. Very cold here at the moment. Did you stay early today or did I miss something? I did start a little bit early. Started at 7 today. Not sure whether I'm going to start at 7 from now on. I'll put a, um, uh, the question out there. Well, do we start at 7 or do we start at 7.30? I'm not sure. Uh, we, can, uh, we can debate that. Uh, isn't 100 more... 100 million more than double the entire Spanish population. Yeah, Spanish uh, population at the moment is around 47 million jacks. So absolutely right. If it gets over 100, there'll be double the population. Mm -mm. Da Vinci Code. Exactly, Mary. That was the book I was looking for. Hey, what else we got going on? Isn't there some scientific proof that if you're flying against the spinning of the earth, your hangover is worse? Don't know, Diffie. Don't know. What else? Foster's was uh, big with Formula One. Yeah, well, probably that is right. Yeah, uh, when uh, <laughs> back in the 1980s, it uh, had a bit. Again, it was in international owners, I think, that were pushing it. I don't know whether it was CUB pushing the expansion of Foster's or not. Paul Gerard, very cold over here in Germany, I think Paul Gerard is. Gigi's in the chat as well. From Arizona. Nice to have you back live. Thanks, Gigi. I got your uh, book the other day. I'll check it out as soon as I get a chance. Um, but no doubt other people have uh, sent you some corrections. Sani from Basingstoke. Good evening. Starting the live streams earlier. I seem to be missing the first 10 to 15. I did start earlier today, Sani, around 7. But again, we're going to uh, decide whether I start at 7.30 or 7. I don't know. It'll, it, it'll depend on a couple of things. Eric is saying that um, her jet lag, always uh, much worse going down under to Oz, but okay, back from uh, New Zealand, I think that is, to Barcelona. My trips were always Barcelona, Sydney, Auckland, Barcelona. Yeah, well, if you go down to Auckland, that's uh, it's even further than uh, where I go to. Auckland's a long way away. And uh, Iggy, the last uh, chat that I can see here, hello from Hayen, and Happy New Year. Thanks, Iggy. Now, that's the end of the, the uh, live stream. Thank you very much for uh, tuning in again. I will be back, I think, on Tuesday. I'm, going, I'm trying to work it out. I think I'm going to go live stream Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, and uh, regular news on Mondays and Fridays, if that makes sense, and maybe some other videos uh, thrown in there too. I have to work on those. I have to get out and about. haven't uh, really... Been looking forward to getting out and about because it's been a bit too chilly for my liking. But anyway, Tony Spain, 2021, beautiful in Yanes in the north of Spain. Yes, it is a beautiful part of the country, Tony, isn't it? In Asturias, in the north of the country, but probably a little bit wet and hopefully none of that, um, none of those little plastic things are washing up on the beaches there too. But anyway, that's a story for another day also. Now, as I said, wrapping the live stream up, I'll be back again on Tuesday with another live stream, a regular news broadcast tomorrow. Some people prefer those, so I'm going to mix it up a little bit between the two. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Thanks for hitting that like button. Thanks, uh, Pete and Jane, for the super chat. Greatly appreciated. I'll be back again, as I said, on Tuesday. Hopefully, I will see you then. 7 or 7.30, not sure, but uh, leave a comment in the comment section below uh, as to which time you prefer 7 p.m or 7 30 p.m and uh, we'll see if i can comply to those wishes thank you very much hasta luego hasta entonces adios bye bye